welcome back to the NFA Review Channel. Today we're going to be taking an in-depth look at the primary weapon systems BDE, the Bravo Delta Echo 7.62 suppressor that they came out with a little over a year ago. They also have a, I believe, a 5.56 version and a pistol caliber version already. Hopefully after this review, we'll get a rundown on those and give you guys an in-depth look on them as well. So PWS definitely came out swinging on the suppressor market side of things. And today we're gonna take an in-depth look at it, see how it performs out on the range, and of course, get some detailed uh, shots here in the studio. Before we kick it off, just wanna give a shout out to everyone who has signed up for Suppress Fest 2023. This November, uh, PWS will be there, so you will be able to hear this and their other suppressors in person, which is the best way to judge a suppressor purchase when you're on the fence on a lot of details. Some of you guys know exactly what you want, and some of you guys need every little detail, like me, when I used to, you know, thumb through the, the archives and the internet back, you know, 15 years ago when I bought my first can. So some of you guys need all the information uh, possible before you make a decision, and really the cherry on top is always going to be to hear it in person. So that's what Suppress Fest is for, and hopefully I see a lot of you guys out there this November. Let's go ahead and get to it. All right, let's pop open this case. While we're on the case, as much as I dislike cases like this as a reviewer, because I end up like compiling just loads of storage issues. I have so many suppressor cases up in my attic, you guys have no idea. However, this is an SKB case, and they did give you the full pull and pluck uh, foam kit. So technically, if you're gonna keep this on your firearm in your safe, which you most likely will, you can convert this to carry your carry gun, your pistols, when you go flying. If you like me and you travel a lot, and you're flying to a state that has reciprocity with yours for concealed carry, this would make a nice uh, case to carry your pistol and carry knife and stuff like that. You can check in the plane. So a little side note there. In the case, you'll find, of course, the full foam set, some coupons, a decal, a little hand card here, and of course, the manual, okay, and the takedown tools that you need. So, pretty nice setup. Two things here, it's a modular can. So, when I discuss the weight and the length, I'm gonna give you both at the same time. So, in the total overall length configuration, it would be 8.2 inches in length, and it would weigh 17.4 ounces. Now, you remove all these and just move the uh, end cap down, it comes in at an overall length of 6.5 inches with a total weight of 12.7 ounces. Your diameter, of course, will maintain the same at 1.75 inches. Now, as far as material, this is 100% constructed of 3D printed titanium and then CNC machined. So really neat, more on that later. As far as the finish, it is externally coated in a PVD finish. So that is really, really nice to see very durable finish and very slick as well. So uh, uh, I hope to see that more on other manufacturers products moving forward. As far as the mount, of course, it is going to be a industry universal 1.375 by 24. The caliber rating is it's rated up to 300 Win Max. Of course, everything down below that. Today we'll be shooting 308, 300 blackout and 556. As far as some metering uh, data, this is factory tested and it is as follows. They tested it on a eight inch barrel, 300 blackout bolt gun, and it metered in at 121.5. And then I would say worst case, and that was in the full length configuration if I didn't uh, specify, okay? And then worst case I would say is the shortest length configuration on a 16 inch barrel 308 direct impingement gas AR, okay, 140.7. So right at the OSHA threshold for hearing damage. Again, shortest configuration on a 308 16 inch gun. Those are loud as hail. All right, so there you go. You got best case, worst case to work from. As far as rating for durability, strength, 
It is full auto rated and no minimum barrel length requirements specified on the website. Uh, comes in at a retail price of $1,099. Okay, and I'm sure the lifetime, or I'm sure the warranty's lifetime. I didn't see that on the website. I must have missed it, but pretty much everybody does it. I'm just gonna go ahead and assume that they followed suit. All right, now that we have all the boring specifications out of the way, let's get to the special features on this cool suppressor. So, I mentioned earlier, 3D printed titanium and then CNC machine. Now, what that did is it allowed them to do complex things like, well, that external finish that looks really cool and photographs really well if you've been watching my Instagram. Um, they claim that this design on the outside uh, increases the surface area enough to help with heat mitigation, which will, of course, help with heat mirage when you're looking through a scoped rifle. So that's pretty cool. So it's not just for looks, even though it does look pretty badass, um, it does help with heat mitigation. So that's pretty neat. We're probably going to be seeing that now more in the future uh, instead of just a, like a slick slided, uh, slick sided suppressor. Why not machine it to help with heat mitigation? I mean, it makes sense. Okay. Moving forward, you'll see one, two, three, four baffles apart from this main section. And then of course a blast chamber. Starting from the back, it does ship with a 5 8 by 24 direct thread adapter. And of course you can use what other uh, company's adapters you guys are already used to and highly invested in. Uh, today we'll probably be using a plethora of different uh, brands to adapt on all the hosts we're going to bring. Uh, moving forward from the blast chamber area, you'll see that the manufacturer writing and the serialized information is on the first section here on the blast chamber. That is the safest part of any suppressor, especially a rifle suppressor. Uh, so that's cool that they thought of that. Then you have this second section here. And I'll show you right away with a close up shot. These are all tapered. So every section of the suppressor is tapered. Now what that's going to do is not only it's going to allow you to lock it down properly so that it doesn't loosen under fire, but it's going to prevent any fouling getting on those threads, making uh, removal later impossible. So that's pretty cool. Um, so you'll see that first chamber. I mean, you can see here I'm doing it by hand. So I can't get a real count right here as we're doing this, but uh, there is a handful of baffles in here. There's at least five in this module alone. Okay. And remember, this is your short setup. So in the blast chamber, there's nothing. Okay. And then this is your first section. Again, I'll show you some tight shots here of this. Now this would be the short configuration here. Okay. That's it. All you would do is then loosen your front cap, transfer it down. And now you have your, I believe it was a 12.7 ounces at 6.5 inches in length. That's your short configuration right there. Looks pretty cool, okay? But then, in your own leisure time, you can test and tune your suppressor with these additional four baffles, okay? So you can just sit here and break them apart. I just broke apart two. There is no specific order. And then you can just modify it as you go. Now, I think for the sake of time for today's video, this is already getting long here in the studio. What we're going to do is just do the shortest configuration and the longest configuration for each host. We really don't have time to sit there and do like none and then one and then two and then three and then four. It's just, it'll just take too long. So those of you out there that are going to invest in the suppressor, I'm sure you'll have a lot of fun tinkering with it out on the range. So that's what it looks like with just two on the end. I got my two spares here. Going back to the suppressor, when you tighten these, and I'll show you a tight shot here, it's uh, very apparent illustrated here in my hands, they have symmetrical internal baffle notches to help maintain accuracy. And as you can see here, with it locked and tapered tight, those notches are perfectly lined up. Now that's going to help minimize any point of impact shift. Now when shooting with any amount of weight hanging on the end of a precision rifle, the barrel harmonics will change. So anytime you add anything on the end of the barrel on a precision rifle, it's going to change the way that barrel whips the harmonics of the barrel. Okay. So that can change point of impact. But in addition to that, the way the gases flow behind the projectile can also alter the bullets path. So uh, a lot of suppressor companies in the last couple of years have been spending a lot of time on making that not happen. So we will test the accuracy out there today. We'll shoot some groups unsuppressed and suppressed with that, uh, 
Remington 700 embedded in a Accuracy International chassis. We'll use that, we use it a lot here on the channel, and we'll see what, if it has any point of impact shift and how tight the groups maintain. I believe that wraps it up for the studio. You'll have your obvious notches here on the external part of the baffles that coincide with your spanner wrenches that it ships with. You have a large uh, nut pattern here on the front cap. I'm sure you can use a socket to loosen that should it seize up, but it shouldn't because it's tapered. And that's about it. I'll get some beautiful B-roll shots here that you guys have probably been watching the entire time. And then I'm going to pack up a plethora of hosts here. Before we get shooting, a quick word from our sponsor, Capital Armory. They're the nation's largest silencer dealer and have expanded their silencer shipping ability to multiple states with even more on the way. They can still ship directly to Texas residents, but they can now deliver silencers directly to your door for those in many other states. The process is simple and keeps everything in house. So there are no additional dealers, transfer fees, or headaches. They manage the entire process from start to finish to make your life easier. The process is very simple. Once you purchase a silencer online through their website, you'll be contacted to begin your online customer profile to provide them with fingerprints and other necessary information to complete your e-file form four. After the ATF approves your form, Capital Armory will initiate electronic transfer paperwork with you and your silencer will be mailed directly to your front door. And the best part is, your customer profile only needs to be done once, so you'll be ready to go for all future orders. Head to CapitalArmory.com today to learn more. IP headphone users. No more steel.
Wow, lot to unpack here. First things first, it is at least 100 degrees out. I think they said the feels like 102. We have a very slight breeze. Now, those of you that have vacationed in Florida or live here know that is the difference between life or death out here. Good Lord, it is humid. Um, another thing, I filmed the studio sequences that you just watched over two weeks ago. I got extremely sick. I don't know if you can hear it, but I'm still getting over it. I've been coughing like crazy, so my voice is pretty much gone. So just bear with me here. So let's just unpack this, and I believe the order we shot it and how I'm going to edit it. We'll start with the 300 blackout. First things first, this is cool. Got a, a Christensen Arms. Uh, this is the Ridgeline Scout chambered in 300 blackout. Bought this off of Jason over at Gun Trader Den. Um, pretty cool. Um, so now I don't have any more feeding issues like on my other gun. However, Magpul just released the bottom metal kit that I needed for that hunter stock, so I bought it. So now I have two 300 uh, blackout bolt actions that actually work. Pretty cool. As far as ammo, we were using 220 grain subsonic uh, that I got from 2A Warehouse. Uh, I think we did have one light primer strike early on. Other than that, everything ran good, sounded really good. Um, okay, so did help with the recoil in the long and the short configuration. If you remember in the studio, I said we were going to shoot it in the full length and then without the four extra baffles on the end. We didn't have time to do individual testing. That's for you guys to do once you buy one. Um, yeah, 300 blackout, bolt action, sounded great. Okay, not a shock there. Sounded really great in the long configuration, as you can imagine. Uh, sounded decent in the short. If I had my choice to shoot it, uh, I would shoot it long configuration with 220 grain on the 300 blackout, okay? Now, this is where things got a little weird. The 308, now mind you, I was not wearing ear protection when shooting it for the first time in the short configuration. That's the order I shot it in. Uh, you know, I was expecting it to be loud. It was not. That was weird to me. Um, it sounded really good in the long but it sounded damn decent in the short configuration and uh, that really perplexed me uh, as far as recoil it definitely cut the recoil down it was not as sharp it was more delayed more enjoyable to shoot for sure um, again the short configuration on the 308 sounded good so take that to the bank that that did surprise me i thought we were going to really need that extra module on the end turns out you don't now Conversely, on the Knight's Armament 10 and a half inch here, the little fireball maker, um, on the full length, it sounded great, but I did get too much gas out of the uh, firearm. So uh, more gas than it would be enjoyable to shoot past one mag, okay? So when I took it down to the, uh, the shorter version without the four baffles on the end, it was actually perfectly manageable. So on a little stubby 10 and a half inch SBR, definitely run just a short configuration on there. Suppression was also good, very low tone. Um, it did throw some mad sparks out the front. It's a titanium suppressor. We all know they do that. It did have first round spark. I didn't hear any first round pop actually all day, even on the 300 blackout. It sounded pretty uh, consistent from shots one to the end of the magazine. But as far as sparking, uh, no issues out of these two guns, but out of the little 10 and a half inch, a lot of fire to maintain there. And we were getting a lot of sparks out the front, uh, which I was shooting in the shade as much as I could without dying in the sun. And I was trying to adjust exposure in between all the clouds moving. So you guys should have saw some pretty good 4th uh, uh, of July effects out the front of that sucker. So. Yeah, I think that pretty much covers it. Um, as far as Mirage, I was getting towards the end of the day shooting here downrange. Um, I was getting some heat Mirage off of it. Uh, but again, I had just mag dumped this guy too. So not much you could do there with surface area. It's only gonna take time to cool it down. Uh, I decided to shoot only the full length configuration down here because this video is already getting long. We didn't have time to dick around with the short configuration way back here. Um, I left the camera where it was, where I shoot my profile views. I'll show you that now. All I did was rotated the camera on the tripod, aimed it over here, 
and then we were getting the downrange scenes. The microphone was approximately 45 to 50 yards from the muzzle, and then the burn behind it was another 15, so the bullet was passing the microphone on the downrange scenes. So, a little side note there. Well, I also did not check for accuracy because I forgot fresh cardboard, so that is my fault. <clears throat> so, what I'm going to do is sometime next week when I film another review for another company while I'm out here, I'm gonna film a YouTube short of the point of impact shift testing for this suppressor. So stay tuned for that on my channel. And of course, subscribe to Rumble as well in case YouTube access all the gun channels one day. I've been uploading all of these reviews that you're watching on YouTube. I've, put, I've been putting them on Rumble as well. And again, if you wanna hear this suppressor in person, they will be at Suppress Fest 2023 this November, tickets are just past halfway sold out, so don't wait. Get on it. Once they're sold out, that is it. We cannot do anything for you. Hope you guys enjoyed it. See you next time.